Uh, welcome everyone. So it's raining outside um, on and off, so we're kind of stuck inside. And I was thinking about what crafts are kind of easy to do and utilize physical materials and digital tools like we have these days. That's my kid in the background. So one super easy thing we could do is, um, I thought we could do like a little puppet show. And for instance, I have this really pretty paper. So I'm gonna turn it over to the back. Um, you can see I actually drew something else on it. Originally I was, I, I used this actually for in the witch, in the witch's hat in my ghost story app, um, if you've seen that. So we're gonna draw like a very simple little ghost. I mean, again, you don't really have to know how to draw for most of these things. So we'll do that. And then I'll just give him little arms. We'll see if my battery holds up and if my kid lets me do this. Um, So you draw it on the back side, and then coloring. That's what she keeps saying. And then you cut it out, and you can use. So maybe you don't have this particular paper, but you probably have gift wrap all over at home and maybe even some odds and ends, little pieces from when you wrap a present around the holiday, that's a thing. You end up with a lot of that. So you can cut those out and use them. And if it's not thick enough to hold its own shape, you can get some cardboard and stick it on that. For cardboard, I used to, as a kid, always loved using the, I think I'm upside down for you, aren't I? Let's do it this way. I always loved using um, the backs of pads of paper once they were done. So, I'm just looking around for some eyes to put on this guy. So we could put a googly eye. I actually have just one lone googly eye. I cannot find another one here. But, it doesn't have to be a googly eye. Could be a button. Could be one of each. That could be kind of interesting. And then, I have a stick here somewhere. Here it is. So these are the kind of sticks that you have for stirring coffee at coffee places but you can also buy them at craft stores and my glue is always drying out do you guys have this problem i'm probably just not good enough about closing it right away so any kind of interesting paper will do and i'm just gonna leave him with one of each eye i feel like that's part of the spooky spooky thing. And then you add some glue here and or you could even tape it if like me you sometimes find yourself without glue. So now what your kids can do is have a little puppet show. You can make more puppets like this and you can set up any kind of background. I have some leaves. We collect a lot of leaves outside. So you could for instance set those up to sort of stand in for trees. And the fun thing is you just take your cell phone and you have your kids like, here, make some puppets and make a puppet show and save the video and show me what you made. It's also nice because honestly, we're not gonna realistically be able to save every little thing our kid makes. Um, so if you have it digitally, later you have something to remember these things by even when the physical things are gone. So another fun thing is we always like to repurpose our junk mail and things like that. So here's a catalog uh, some interior design magazine or catalog that we got. It's got a lot of beautiful things actually. You could easily cut out whatever you want from, so you can cut out an object that you see or you can look at a pattern and say, I'm gonna cut out you know, a ghost made of this or Frankenstein monster made of that. But I was looking at this and I thought, these, these dudes look kind of creepy. Um, these old paintings. So one of those could be a character Makes you think of like the picture of Dorian Gray. Um, by the way, if you have older kids who are reading all sorts of interesting things, you can come up with projects like this for them um, around those 
things that they're reading. Um, so I could have cut out the whole picture and made that part of the story that he's in the portrait, but I just thought, I don't know, I had it in my head that he would be an actual character. He kind of looks like a ghost because of the, the way he's painted. Um, so the ghost, I picked a ghost because of Halloween, obviously. So I thought, let's do like a ghostly sort of puppet show. Um, but you could do this with any kind of topic or theme. I'm always torn. On the one hand, I want to give kids like complete freedom, right? So they can do whatever. And so I'm not binding them with expectations. On the other hand, sometimes that's too overwhelming. They're like, what do I do? So sometimes it's good to be limiting. So you might, not limiting, like you, you, obviously they can do whatever they want, but give some sort of theme as a challenge to work within that theme. So a theme could be, you know, to come up with a ghost story or a mystery ghost story in particular. Um, it could also be limitations of materials. You could tell them, uh, only use what's in this magazine, things like that. Um, I hear footsteps. I feel like someone, that sounds so Halloween and spooky, someone is approaching. I think I might have to end this video soon, but I hope you got some ideas out of this and maybe when you have a rainy day like this uh, and you want your kids to be doing something besides just watching TV, you could give them something like this to do. And this video is in portrait mode, but actually I think a good way to do it, just turn your head sideways, a good way to do a puppet show like this would be like that. You could put all sorts of interesting objects in the background and have them come up with a little show. They could record it, they could save it, they could share it. In fact, why don't you do something like that and share it with us? I'd love to see what you're doing. Um, so thanks for watching, if you're watching. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.